This game is tea and is not suitable for kids. <laughs> Don't let your kids watch it! Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, buddy! And guess. Welcome to back to Miles Edgeworth, Ace Attorney Investigations Prosecutor's Path, everybody. Last time we got the mother of all bombshells dropped on us. Apparently the mastermind of this final case is meek, timid little Simon Keys. Which I still don't really get, but... Well... Okay. We're about to confront him. Oh, it's the grand town about just the end. No parts. This is the last okay. period. That's, that's quicker than I thought it was going to be. There's still a decent... There's still a lot of reveals left, though. Yeah, I'm sure. So, without further ado, let's begin. April 6th, 5.30 p.m. Very Big Circus, storage tent. But you never thought you'd hear this music for the final confrontation, huh? I, why is he turned around? That's freaking me out. That's freaking me out, man. <gasps> Mr. Edgeworth! Are you guys here for the show? Mr. Keys, Miss Barry. You're a little early. I'm sorry, but we're still getting ready. But I'm so happy you came. You remembered our promise. Yep, we didn't forget. Yes, I remembered. You asked us to come and see the show when you gave me this. You know, I think, um, Mr. Flying Man should be wearing higher p waisted pants. <laughs> Those were some crotch lines there. <laughs> I'm so happy you came! Please enjoy yourselves! I'm sure my performance will surprise you, Mr. Edgeworth. Ooh, in more ways than what? Your performance has already surprised me, Mr. Keys. Um, but he hasn't performed yet. Regina, please have a look at this photo. Is this balloon the property of the Berry Big Circus? <gasps> it is! Did you see it flying around somewhere? It's highly likely that this balloon was used by the culprit in the case we are investigating. Huh? Who is in charge of the balloon? Well, that would be Simon, but... Are you saying... Mr. Keys, you flew this balloon in the middle of the night. Did you not? I do occasionally practice alone at night. I'm not much of a pilot, though. I'm a little clumsy. Heh. <laughs> so for practice, you'll do something as challenging as flying a balloon at night? Wouldn't that be rather difficult for someone who is clumsy and not much of a pilot? Then, what do you think I was doing, Mr. Edgeworth? I mean, we think you did some murdering, but... You brought Kay to the roof of the Grand Tower. Ooh, also, he wanted... Actually, what he really wanted to do was pretend to be Peter Pan and move the clock <laughs> and stand on the... <laughs> yes, and then summon the Grim Reaper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he wanted to summon the Grim Reaper. That's exactly it. In order to frame her for the murder of Jill Crane. Not a single security camera recorded Kay using the elevator. Therefore, the only way she could have gotten up there was through flight. And the only one who could have flown her up there was you, Mr. Keys. Also, this explains why the floating uh, guy with the red coat was there. Mm -hmm. No way. Mr. Edgeworth, how can you say that? That's not all. You drugged John at the garbage pickup and kidnapped him. This is a lot of allegations all at once. Wasn't that why you were late when you came to watch the trial of Patricia Rowland? No way. I have no idea what you're saying. There's no way I could do fiends like that. Please believe me. Mr. Edgeworth, please! I wanted to believe you. However, you have broken that trust yourself. Th th that's horrible! Why would you say that? Didn't you once say that you would trust me? That you'd believe in me? Yeah, once. Don't you worry about that. We're your allies. That's because... We're like birds of a feather, right, Mr. Edgeworth? Birds of a feather, huh? I suppose that's true. We have sufficient information about your past. I doubt you had a motive to kill Knightley. Rather, you are probably the most affected by his death. And I doubt someone as timid as you could work up the courage to murder someone. All right, we'll get you out of here. We'll believe in you. Yeah, but that was- that was happened a long time ago. Also, that was the episode where we accidentally used my laptop's microphone instead of the Yeti microphone. So oh, the audio that? quality sucked on that oh, one. Oh, I didn't know that. Whoops. <laughs> I didn't know that till later, either. I'm so sad. Those words were all lies. 
It wasn't a lie. We really did trust you. Kay, even you? You said we were like birds of a feather, and yet... I'm hurt, Kay. You've hurt me deeply. I'm waiting for this guy to snap with clown makeup on. I... I... Oh. Yeah, this is the last case where they ran out of sprites. He literally just has the one sprite. <laughs> hey, Mr. Edgeworth, maybe Simon isn't a bad guy after all. I see. So that's how you operate. I understand now all too well. No matter who you face, you find an emotional weakness and exploit it. You guide each person towards the outcome you desire without them even noticing it. That is how you were able to mastermind the entire case. I may have fallen for your tricks before, but not this time. But not this time. Simon Keys, I indict you! Did he come in here with an entourage, by the way? Yeah, well, there's a lot of people. Hmm, so it's come to this after all. You were always so full of confidence, Mr. Edgeworth. But I rather like that, because now I can rip that confidence to shreds. Oh, cool. Hey! Oh no, he's got birds! That's even worse! Oh no, he's like the guy- he, he's like the girl from Enchanted. Uh-oh. He's like the girl from Enchanted, only evil. He's like what?! <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say, most badass final boss music in the Ace Attorney series right here. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the new version of the person that like caresses the skull or like caresses the, the cat. cat. He's just leaning on the cat who's leaning on the <laughs> <laughs> who's yeah. leaning on a pig. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought that letting your hair down and opening your eyes could make you look so sinister? Because <laughs> he always keeps his eyes closed. <laughs> Good work, everyone. <sighs> his personality has completely changed. Regina's like, oh. So, the animal tamer who could not tame animals. That was all a facade. This is the real Simon Keys. I- Simon? That's not true, is it? Truth or lie, what difference does it make? Huh? Mr. Edgeworth just made me a little upset, that's all! Oh, he became the Joker. <laughs> Why does he laugh like Dogen? Why, indeed. You'll take responsibility for upsetting me, right? This is funny. But... <laughs> this is amazing. Simon. Okay, I'm just gonna say Simon Keys is my favorite villain in the Ace Attorney really? series. Really? Yes. Favorite. He, he's freaking amazing. I... <laughs> you'll, see, uh... you'll see. Also, there has been so much foreshadowing to this. Like, from so from what I've heard, so the very f first, like in the first case before we even met him. Shelly DeKiller's like, oh yes, I was hired to assassinate the president. I was hired by a key individual. Okay. For Simon Keys. And then in J the Japanese version, apparently, he's like, I'm look I was hired by, like, he uses a word that apparently can mean, like, a sneaky person or, like, a monkey. So there's there's just crazy amounts of foreshadowing. Kanji, this. man, there's so many meanings to balloon it. Balloon practice. It's true. I practiced with the balloon two nights ago. That photo must have been taken when the balloon and I passed near the building. I often fly around that area for advertising purposes. <laughs> There's nothing unusual about that, right? Oh, nothing unusual about you <laughs> juggling squirrels being evil! <laughs> you often fly around the Grand Tower in the balloon? Yeah, even the circus needs to advertise. Regina, is that true? I yeah, it was Simon's job to advertise using the balloon. Most people who live around here should have seen it. That balloon was used in the crime we are investigating. Like I said, it's just a coincidence. He looks like an anime character. I simply happened to pass by the Grand Tower when that photo was taken. I shall determine whether or not it was a coincidence after I hear your full story. Oh, yes. I, lo I also love how he's leaning on the animals. <laughs> I practiced at the balloon two nights ago. Is the cat in the circus, or does he just have a pet it's cat? It's just a stray. <laughs> was the balloon launched from the tent? There's a nice big park near the Sunshine Coliseum. I always launch the balloon there. I see. In that case, how do you transport the balloon to the park? Well, it's too heavy to carry by hand. It weighs several hundred pounds. And yet, it can fly in the sky. Amazing, isn't it? Yeah. I asked you how you transported it. Now answer the question. 
Oh, I can't even make some small talk. Look at the squirrels. <laughs> You're mean, Mr. Edgeworth. They're all they're all like jumping around. I know. Also, you can tell that the DS is reaching his limits because these new sprites are really slow. <laughs> I and think like, that might just be lag from the elevator oh, maybe, though. Maybe. I used a truck. The balloon is loaded on the back of the truck. A truck? Yeah, the last time I took the truck and the balloon out was two days ago. Hmm, I cannot overlook that piece of testimony. How old is Simon Keats? Is he like- Same age as Nightly, I think he's 24. My age. Ah, oh, we can't check. Okay. Allow me to confirm. You haven't driven the truck since then. Hang on, now we can look. Simon Keys. Oh yeah, wow. It's 24. <laughs> I thought that said, okay, I have horrible eyes, so I thought that said apprentice animal terrorist. At the, at the very <laughs> maybe, maybe that too. <laughs> Do you really need to confirm that? I mean, I just said it five seconds ago. <laughs> Answer the question. Or would it be inconvenient for you to do so? <laughs> That's a pretty weak provocation coming from you, Mr. Edgeworth. What could be inconvenient about something I've already said? Fine, I get it. That truck has been parked behind the dressing room since two days ago. And the balloon and basket are still inside. Is there a problem? There is no problem. I simply wanted to express my thanks for that piece of testimony. So the truck was parked here for the past two days. Heh. <laughs> That was exactly what I wanted to hear, Mr. Keys. May I continue? So then, regarding the balloon... That photo must have been taken when the balloon and I passed near the building. You're saying it was simply a coincidence that you were photographed near the tower. What's gonna happen to tonight per tonight's performance when we own him? <laughs> uh, they get Gumshoe to join instead. <laughs> this year, uh, today's uh, animal trainer... No, no, trainer so... <laughs> What? <laughs> <laughs> so this is what they're gonna do, Marty. They're gonna get Pup Pup to do it instead. <laughs> oh yeah, Pup Pup will uh, throw pies at cars. <laughs> yeah. Or, or jump on the trampoline. <laughs> exactly. That's all the circus needs. Oh, I get it now. I know how you operate now, Mr. Edgeworth. You'll insist that a coincidence is impossible until you get your way. When you say it like that, everything will inevitably go your way. How scary! Ugh. Ugh, you're wrong. Mr. Edgeworth isn't like that. Okay, calm down. He's only trying to provoke an emotional response. He's a triangle ton. He does. <laughs> he intends to gout us into losing our focus in order to derail the topic at hand. Now, why do you think he would do that? Um, because he's a clown? No, I mean because he's trying to hide something, I guess. Exactly, Kay. We must not let up on him. However, we must continue to keep our composure. Understand? Yep. So, Simon, allow me, as the assistant, to ask you a question. When you passed by the Grand Tower at the pre 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 precise moment, was it really just a coincidence? Could have just left things at that, but... For the sake of your assistant, I shall explain my reason for being there. I often fly around that area for advertising purposes. <gasps> So, in addition to advertising with the balloon, maintaining the balloon is also your job. Am I wrong? You're a real stickler for the details, you know? Yeah, that's right. Ask the boss if you want. Right, boss? Yep, Simon's in charge of cleaning and fixing and all that stuff with the balloon. Also, in the second case, during the animal show, Simon played the part of the villain in the show. That's also another oh, cool yeah, bit of foreshadowing. Oh yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. That's cool. I like that. I don't think anyone besides Simon's used the balloon for a while now. Hmm. That confirms he was the one riding the balloon in the photo taken two days ago. However, if he is the mastermind, he must have used it today as well. Am I able to prove that? Looks like you're deep in thought. Is it really that hard to comprehend? Hot air balloons fly in the sky. And in other news, the sky is blue and the grass is green. There's nothing unusual about that, right? I wonder about that. You flew the balloon in the middle of the night, eerily close to a certain other incident. Would you say there's nothing strange about that as well? Mr. Edgeworth, isn't that like a really leading question? Won't you please stop being such a naughty prosecutor? It's kind of a downer. It's a clown's job to put smiles on people's faces after all ducks and weaves around my questions skillfully. 
Very well. In that case, I will simply have to make use of a more direct attack. We still don't know much about the balloon. In any case, I must draw out more information. My question is why... If Simon is, you know, quote-unquote, the mastermind, the guy behind everything, why is he in the circus? Why isn't he in, like, a better place, better <laughs> job, making more money? Because he doesn't seem to be the happiest there. I feel like he's kind of like, I'm here because of my job. Yeah. And, like, not That's really... an interesting point. Well, um, the truck was in front of the Grand Tower Oh, today, that's his stupid so... truck. I thought that was somebody else's truck. Ugh, there's a lion behind Edgeworth. There's a tiger, yeah. The truck you put the balloon into, was it blue by any chance? Blue? <laughs> so what if it is? Today, we saw a blue truck carrying a large basket. If that truck is just so... And that truck just so happened to be yours, then your claim that you last used it two days ago becomes a lie. Oh, I'm sorry. That was from our local radio station whenever we have, like, the <laughs> festival with the balloons. <laughs> Uh? Agent Lane! Emma! Emma? What are you doing here? Mr. Edgeworth, I finally found you! She was in case four. I've been searching for you ever since the incident yesterday. I dashed right over after Kay contacted me just a little while ago. Prosecutor Edgeworth! The thing you were looking for! I found it! It was placed in a blue truck at the dressing room parking lot. Lion Bowling data jotted down in the organizer. A blue truck, as I expected. That truck is, without a doubt, the one I saw today. Objection. That's the one objection I don't really care for. Objection! <laughs> objection! <laughs> it sounds kind of... You doing it, it sounded like him. The, the, it sounded like a cross between Ray's objection and Simon's actual objection. <laughs> there are a number of blue trucks out there, you know. Who's to say you're not mistaking it for a different one? It's definitely that one. I got a good look at it. Huh? Mr. Edgeworth, was that? Uh, it wasn't me. Okay, words have no strength without evidence to back them up. <laughs> That's Mr. Edgeworth's voice. Evidence. Present evidence. Do I have any evidence to prove that this was the truck I saw today? Wasn't there a tape in the truck? That was a different truck. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. What's wrong with Mr. Edgeworth? Why are you touching the truck? The truck's body is cold to the touch. It seems to have been parked here for some time. You can figure all that out just by touching it? What could prove that this is the truck I saw? Look for bloodstains, dusting for fingerprints, using a metal detector. <laughs> well, um, gee! I wonder what it is, it's fingerprints. I'd like to dust the truck for fingerprints. Eh? Fingerprints? What for? I don't see any point in that. A certain person's fingerprints should be left on this truck. And these fingerprints will prove this truck was parked in front of the Grand Tower today. Whose fingerprints prove this truck was in front of the tower? Mine. Lana Hart! <laughs> Lana also probably touched the car, let's yeah. be fair. Edgeworth, your fingerprints? Indeed. Earlier today, I touched a truck at the plaza in front of the Grand Tower. Ever it's a grand old time, touching trucks. I'd like to dust for my prints. Emma, might I request a scientific investigation? That's what I'm here for. Just leave it to me. All right, we're all set. Go ahead, Mr. Edgeworth. This is the one part of the game we dust for fingerprints, and this is the first game I, I actually literally got a DS emulator just for this game, and I'm like, how do I blow in the microphone on an emulator? I literally had to map it to a button. <laughs> Wait, you want me? You want me to do it? Of course. Who else but Mr. Edgeworth would be able up to be up to the task? Here, I'll show you how it's done. Can we just have forensics do it? Um, all right then. You're the scientist. Why don't you just do it yourself? First, we sprinkle some aluminum aluminum powder over the area you want to investigate. Like this. Touch the screen to sprinkle the aluminum powder. The powder will adhere to the fingerprints, so once you've sprinkled enough, you blow it away. Blow it away? Yeah, just blow on it with your breath. Blow the powder away by blowing into the microphone. Got it? Yes, I think so. I guess we'll do it for real this time. Just so you know, the key point is to sprinkle the powder all over. I have to double check what the actual hotkey is for blowing. Okay. Uh, R. Cool. Alright. 
We're totally blowing everything. Well, first off. Oh, this is not fun with a trackpad. Nope. <laughs> it's also not fun on a laggy emulator. <laughs> Why did they put this in? This one part. This is, they literally just could have had forensics be like, oh, yeah, it's at your speed it's so, they can, it's so they can put on the box art. You get to dust for fingerprints in All right, this Marty. game. All right, Marty. We got one. That's a nice, clean fingerprint. Let's run the prince against mine post-haste. All right, just leave it to me. These are definitely your fingerprints, Mr. Edgeworth. Well, it seems to me that we have just proven your statement to be a lie. Gah! What were you doing when you were driving this truck around? Give me Taco Bell. <laughs> just taking it for a joyride? <laughs> Kay was abducted two nights ago. Your balloon was sighted not far from the scene. Today, there was another kidnapping in which a garbage truck was used. And once again, your truck was seen nearby. This is all sounds like nothing more than a pure coincidence to me. Ooh, no. So, it was pure coincidence that you parked near two separate kidnappings? I doubt that. You were involved in both kidnappings, weren't you? Isn't it a bit rash to automatically assume that the two kidnappings were connected? No. And what if I had evidence to prove that the two crimes were performed by the same culprit? Oh, you're serious? I can't wait to hear this! I like that. What did Kay and John's kidnappings have in common? They kidnapped children! Well, kind of. They also, uh, picked people with, uh, sleeping True. Kay was knocked out with a powerful sleeping drug. And a bottle of sleeping drugs was found lying in the place where John was confined. Also, he was knocked out with sleeping drugs. He told us yep. this. The contents of the bottle were a match with the drugs used on Kay. So that's all you've got, huh? And here I was getting my hopes up. So the same sleeping drugs were used. So what? You think that connects the two incidents? Surely you must realize it yourself. That doesn't prove a thing. We'll check for fingerprints. Nah! But there must be something! Evidence that proves he's connected to those cases. The police, prosecutors, and even you, Mr. Edgeworth. In the end, you're all the same. You make up evidence as you see fit just so you can send some poor soul to prison. Isn't there someone like that here? A poor soul who was wrongly accused in the past? Objection. You're wrong! What? Who would do such a thing? Objection. Then show me the evidence! If you're going to accuse me of a crime, it's only natural. Ugh. It's no use. You can't seem to find any of our friends linking him to the kidnappings. Now then, have you finally run out of ammo, Mr. Edgeworth? I still have preparations to make at the circus, so if you'll excuse me... Objection. Now, now, you two. No need to get so heated. And Simon, you're looking good in that clown makeup. Hey, what's your deal? Don't just butt in like that. Uncle Ray's not so good in such a st stiff environment. I mean, why oh, no. so Is serious, he make, right? Is he gonna make him hug and then, like, <laughs> stick his hands down his pockets or something? <laughs> hey, Kay, how about a little trick? At last, my moment has arrived! The great Kay... The great Kay Faraday presents Assignment Impression! O objection! <laughs> what? What are you... Enough already! Miles, I'm buying you some time to get all your ducks in a row. It's probably a better way to stop the time than this, but whatevs. Woo, nice one, Kay! <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so sure about this method either. But I have to find something that connects Simon to the case, and I need to find it now. Bum -ba Is there evidence not related to the kidnapping that's connected to the Mastermind's identity? That's it. The mastermind is the same person as the young acolyte Dogen was looking for. If I can just connect the young acolyte to Simon. Which piece of evidence could be connected with the mastermind's true identity? I mean, Simon's totally good at writing Braille. <laughs> I have no idea if that's it or- Actually, doesn't he- didn't he go visit Simon, like, every single week? He visited nightly in, in prison multiple times, yeah. So that's probably- but, but I don't know how- so you think it's the I think chest memo? I think it's him, but but uh, how? Simon totally doesn't 
doesn't know how to write Braille. Maybe he does. Knightley and Dogen both communicated through a certain individual. Oh, then that somebody must be the mastermind behind the case. I always wondered why he kept going there. That's it. The mastermind played a role in the correspondence chess. I think that's part of what was making me so confused and slightly annoyed with the previous cases. I'm like, there's so many things unsolved. Why? They're all getting solved Why do solved we now? not? Right, but it's weird that they're all getting solved. Where it's like, and then this connected to this, and then Simon Keys did this. <laughs> I mean, case two it wrapped up basically everything fine. And then you learn actually no, there was way more actually, to it. Actually no, yeah. Case 2 is brilliant in this game. So is this case. If I can prove that it was Simon, then. That's enough! I can't stomach any more of your sorry excuse for a performance. If you have no more objections, then I ask that you let me get back to preparing for the show. Objection. Thank you for the help, Mr. Shields. Though you may have taken it a little too far. You sure look happy. I take it you found something. Look at me! I'm Simon! Simon the Clown! Okay, you can stop now. Now then, Mr. Keys, do you happen to like chess? <laughs> that was rather out of the blue. But since you asked, I can't say I dislike chess. The mastermind played correspondence chess with Sir Han Dogen. If I recall, it was Knightley who had been playing chess with Dogen, wasn't it? Are you saying that he was the mastermind? There was no way Knightley could have been the mastermind. The reason being... The Mastermind had continued to work behind the scenes even after Knightley's death. That being the case, who could have written this letter? I believe someone acted as the middleman between Dogen and Knightley. So you're saying that you think I'm the middleman? <laughs> and why would I go to all the trouble to do something like that? Most likely to make it appear as if there was a connection between Knightley and Dogen. And as a result, Knightley was killed by Patricia Rowland. No way! Are you saying it was all set up so that he would get killed by her? Objection. What are you saying? There's no way I can manipulate a person that far! You can manipulate animals that far. Look at me! It takes all I have just to get the animals to perform tricks! If only a, just a scrap of the letters he exchanged with Knightley still remained, it'd be decisive evidence. I'd like to investigate your room. There could be decisive. If it's the letters you're looking for, you won't find any in there. What? I'm the type of guy who throws his letters away as soon as he's done reading them. Same, bro. <laughs> What's the point in living in the past? <laughs> he's basically Rafiki now. <laughs> Does that mean he's already gotten rid of the evidence? Mr. Edgeworth? Everything you've said so far has been nothing more than baseless conjecture. Ooh, that's what every single- well, that's what Winston Payne says, that's what every that's single- That's what like every villain says, Every basically. villain's like, baseless conjecture! Evidence! I'm just one step behind it! What should I do? Am I all out of moves? And then Winston Payne comes out from behind the lion head. Hi guys! I'm in charge! Without evidence, I won't allow you to cast doubt on my friendship with Knightley! <laughs> Who was that? Francisca? Uh, excuse me? Miss Barry, what's on her mind? I've been listening on what you all were saying, and, um, when you say Mr. Knightley, you mean Simon's friend, Mr. Knightley, right? Yes, that's correct. Does she know something? This morning, a letter arrived from Mr. Knightley. It was for Simon. What? What did you say? But that's impossible. Knightley's already dead. Miss Barry, please let me see that letter. Here you go. Thanks, girl. Quick, open it. Next move, move the pawn to G6. Now you can see the path to checkmate. I can't wait to see the look on your face. You weren't expecting to lose a, a chess against me, right? This is a correspondence chess letter. This is the response to Dogen's last move. Now can you see the path to checkmate? I can't wait to see the look on your face. You weren't expecting to lose to chess to me against me, right? The postmark says March 26th, the day before Knightley's death. It seems the letter arrived late. Since the circus moves around so much, a lot of the mail people send us a lot of the mail people send us arrive as late. Now, why was this letter addressed to you? 
Because Gee, George, you suck! <laughs> this is proof that you were the middleman between Dogen and Knightley. Normally, you would transcribe this letter into Braille before sending it to Dogen. And in doing so, you created a connection between him and Knightley. Damn it! Curse you, Knightley! Why must you continue to interfere? Simon, why? Wasn't Knightley your only friend? <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. I stopped thinking of him as a friend 18 years ago. What, when you 18 were freezing? 18 years ago? Together? Would that have been the day of the IS-7 incident? Thanks to Knightley, I nearly died that day in the snowstorm. While I was on my way to the contest venue where my father was waiting, Knightley suddenly appeared. He held me down, tied up my hands and feet and with tears streaming down his face. He kept apologizing. My dad's too scary. I can't disobey him. Please forgive me. I'm sorry. Stop it, Horace! I promised my dad! I said I'd taste his desserts! If I'm not there, dad'll be in trouble! I'm gonna let everyone know my dad's desserts are the best in the world! After that, he locked us inside a car. It was so cold I could see my own breath. Before we knew it, the doors had frozen shut and not even he could get them open. And then, I lost my father! So basically, si Simon, um, Knightley's dad was like, here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna tie down your best friend, lock yourself in the car, and kill yourselves together! He didn't know they were gonna freeze in there. But yeah, Dogen, not Dogen, um, Isaac Dover is one of the biggest butts in the whole series. What the heck? Only, only Blaze the best in this game gets worse than Dover, I would say. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's because Blaze the best lived longer. No, no, Blaze did more messed up stuff. Probably. What? Your father? Horace Knightley was the son of the murderer who killed my father. What could this mean? His confession runs contrary to the information we have. But the name of the victim in the IS-7 incident was Isaac Dover. Isaac Dover is my father's name. Eighteen years ago, my memories were muddled from the shock of my near-death experience. So it wasn't until later that I learned the truth. On that day, my father was murdered. The culprit of the IS-7 incident was a confectioner by the name of Dane Gustavia. Heh! <laughs> so that was the name of Knightley's father. That lowlife scum of the earth killed my father. Just the thought of him makes me sick. I'm wondering if amnesia is playing a part in this as mm. well. So, you knew who the culprit was all along? Ha! <laughs> of course not! Had I known, I would have tipped off the police a long time ago. All I knew was that Knightley's father was trying to set up my own father. That's why I immediately knew that the one who died that day was my dad. Knightley had a hand in my father's murder. That traitor! He was the son of a killer! It's only natural that he ended up dead! It would appear that you are the victim of a very serious misunderstanding. Misunderstanding? <laughs> Just what are you talking about? Isaac Dover. At the time, he was actively working as a sculptor in France. Under the name Pierre Hoquet. Is that right? Well, I'm sorry to say I don't remember that at all. Heh. <laughs> it's only natural that you don't remember. After all, he's not your real father. Huh? What is that supposed to be a joke? I am not amused. Hmph. <laughs> you won't be able to laugh at all once I reveal the truth to you. This piece of evidence proves that you are not Isaac Dover's son. And that's because of the ring. Yep. Take that. What's that? Isn't that Knightley's chessboard in his ring? I want you to take a good look at this ring's design. There are two letters inscribed in it. That is the seal Pierre Hoquet used as his signature. Eighteen years ago, it was found lying near the body of Isaac Dover. But why would Knightley have my father's memento with him? The police had found Isaac Dover's son and gave it to him. Isaac Dover's real son is Horace Knightley. But what? But, but that means I'm... In other words, you are Dane Gustavia's son. That's... That's a lie! After all, I'm... My father is... My memories are... Yeah. That's kind of why I'm like, amnesia probably plays a part in this. I lost my father because Knightley locked me up in the car. That's why I thought it would be fitting if he were killed as well. Really? I won't be able to see
see a circus show even in prison? Heh, I enjoy playing chess with you, but I'm looking forward to your performance as well. Yes, please look forward to it. Alright, you better drop by again. I'll be thinking about my next move. Oh yeah, I've left something special inside that chessboard for you. You should check it out later. Something special? I'm not quite sure what you mean, but thanks. I owe you one, Simon. If only you hadn't stopped me 18 years ago. You wouldn't have had to come to this. Huh? Did you say something? Nope, not a word. Sounds like Ernie. Goodbye, Horace. After all that, you're saying it was my father who killed Nightly's? Then that means, was it all for nothing? I didn't want to become some weakling who could be killed by anyone. That's why I thought I'd follow in Mr. Dogen's footsteps! This finally proves it. Simon Keys, you are Dogen's correspondence chess partner. And the mastermind behind this case. He's carrying rabbits by the ears. <laughs> That's right, it was me. I'm the mastermind behind it all. He's finally showing his true colors. I noticed you had to gear up for that, and I was like, can I, can I prepare my ears? I don't know! And then you just I was actually just it. waiting. I was just waiting for you to stop talking, actually. Oh, sorry. As you all know, I witnessed the incident 12 years ago. President Juan's assassination. So the child who drew that picture was Simon Keyes. When I was found out, I was subjected to horrible interrogations over and over by that heartless Patricia. I'd spend the nights trembling in my bed, terrified of what the next day would bring. I'm sure you could understand why I'd want to sneak out of there, right? However, Blaze would have likely sent pursuers after you. Exactly! I was on the run from them every waking moment, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. I couldn't even sleep at night. I'd jump at the slightest noise. And that's why I became a circus performer. Blaze the Best was the chief prosecutor, and Patricia Rowland was the warden of the prison. No ordinary person would be a match for those two. And there were no adults I could rely on. Yep. Furthermore, behind the scenes was the body double who had set those two in motion. Though he was a fake, I was up against a nation's president. Talk about utter despair, right? My only ally was Mr. Dogen. He saved my life, after all. He actually helped me out. If this story is true, <laughs> it's ironic. Dogen, the fiendish assassin, was idolized by the child he saved. If I followed in his footsteps, I'd no longer have to worry about being eaten alive. That's right! Now it's my turn! My turn to devour those who would feed upon me! And I suppose you never thought to seek help from the police. No way, no way, no way! As well as Blaze was around, any evidence would be destroyed by him! Actually, didn't something like that almost happen today during Patricia's trial? How'd you know? I knew from oh. the very beginning that things would turn out like this. What? Were you gonna Never say? mind, he oh. was there. That evidence from Patricia Rowland's trial. So he's saying that he expected the evidence would be destroyed. I see. So that's why you kidnapped John. To force a guilty verdict even in the absence of evidence. Objection. Who's to say? But in order to expose the crimes of 12 years ago, there was no other choice. That's according to you. However, Blaze also attempted to kidnap John in order to manipulate the trial in his favor. Your methods are no different than those of the people you so despise. Objection. That's only if I were actually the kidnapper. But I could never do anything so evil. No way, no way, no way, no way! I just simply couldn't. Besides Mr. Edgeworth, I'm actually quite thankful to the real criminals for giving me the opportunity to extract such sweet revenge. <laughs> I wish Dogen was here to see him. How proud he'd be. So you admit it. Your motive was revenge. Yeah, I admit it. So what? Sure, I held a grudge against those creeps. But it's not like I'm the one who actually killed them, you know? Truth be told, all I did was send some letters. I let Jill in on Blaze's secrets, and I let Blaze in on Jill's secrets. And then the two simply ended up trying to kill each other. 
Do you mean to say the murder was nothing more than a result of that? Yup, just like the case of Gord Lake. It's way easier than trying to control wild animals. All I did was come up with the fake assassination plan for Nightly. So that was also a part of his plan? If that's the case, then Rook's murder was also your- Objection. Whoa! Don't try to pin that on me! Nightly killed him all on his own. Well, it ended up creating the perfect opportunity for me. It's funny how things work out. How can you say such a thing? It was the same for Patricia Rowland. I made it look like there was a connection between Knightley and Dogen. By using the correspondence chess match and the chisel in the chessboard. What? You mean to say that you were the one who prepared that chisel? That's right! I thought it might bring Dogen to mind. Quite a thoughtful little gift, wouldn't you agree? And that was all it took to get Patricia to murder Knightley! Oh, the feeling that everyone around you is an enemy. <laughs> I know it all too well. The tiniest spark can set off an explosion of fear resulting in horrific mutual destruction. All I did was watch the comedy of errors unfold from the audience. And you were my final pawn, Mr. Edgeworth. Yep. A pawn? Me? I'm at least a bishop. <laughs> when you solved their cases, you brought both Blaze and Patricia to their ruin. And the weapon that delivered the coup de gras was your own logic! I didn't solve those cases for your sake! Oh, I know. You never really cared about saving me. You just wanted to pretend to be a defense attorney, didn't you? Yeah. It's all coming full circle. What did you? All I had to do was go, No way, no way, no way, no way! And that all scared. And you totally believed me. You were giving it your all trying to save me. To be fair, even in the first case, I really did not like him at all. I was like, this guy sucks. He's, he's just so, kind of wimpy and he's boring. He's so wimpy and boring that I can't wait to get be rid of him. <laughs> but he's a magnificent villain. Yeah. So even your arrest was just a ploy to make me use my logic? To be fair, getting arrested was not part of the plan. When people began to suspect that the chisel I sent was the murder weapon, honestly, I broke out in a cold sweat. I thought for sure it would be curtains for me. But then, a turnabout of miraculous proportions! The genius prosecutor himself had come to my rescue. Well, doesn't it feel nice to be thanked by me, the one that you saved? You should be grateful! I gave you this chance to play the ace attorney! <laughs> he is the trolliest, most fourth wall breaking villain, and it's Whoa. the best. Wow. That just happened. You're wrong! He wasn't pretending to be a defense attorney. Mr. Edgeworth is always serious about saving people. Even the times when he saved me in the past. Okay. <laughs> is that so? Are you sure he's not just trying to emulate his own father, the one he admires so much? Absolutely not. That's not true at all. Now, now, Kay. The person he's talking about now isn't Miles, but rather Simon himself. Clearly, he is not able to trust others. The desire to save someone other than himself is something that he cannot even comprehend. Say what you want, but make sure you think about it long and hard. Sure, all my targets for revenge got what they deserved in the end. However... There's even more. Instigating murder? Think about it. Can any one of my actions really be considered a crime? I instigated murder? There's not a single word about that in the letter, is there? If I had said the word kill even once, I guess it could be considered instigation. Well, maybe I did say it, but there's no way for you to prove it. Uh, we have a letter. What are you saying? You kidnapped me! I'm sorry, but that hasn't been proven yet, has it? The only thing I admitted to was sending the letters. That's... We Bes have Kay's letters. Besides, those letters contain no threats or coercions. I simply conveyed information. Information that each recipient would find beneficial. Ugh, you crafty little... Can't we do something about it? Um, what was it he said? Inter insti inter integrating murder? Instigating murder is when a person directs someone else to commit the murder. The person who directed the murder can be charged as if they committed the crime themselves. So we just have to find proof that he directed those murders. You make it sound so easy. To be honest, it kind of pisses me off a little. You're always trying to frame an innocent person for murder. Don't you understand? I'm not obligated to waste any more time on this pointless discussion. 
The police are waiting for you outside of this tent. You have nowhere to run. Really now? You think I wouldn't have an escape route prepared? Pig. For example, let's say... I gave an order so that all the animals here attacked you! Now, what if I were to take my leave during the ensuing chaos? What did you say? You can't be serious. <laughs> it was just an example! Wouldn't that make for an interesting show? I love how in the midst of all this, Regina's just like, yep! He's weird. He's weird. The job interview was kind of weird. <laughs> Here's another idea. What if I pulled out a hidden gun and took John hostage? Hmm, that might be more exciting! I will never allow you to do such a thing! I can't tell whether or not Simon is being serious. However, when it comes to him, we should consider anything a possibility. If you continue to bore me with your drivel, I'll end the show right here. I'd like you to keep that in mind before you make any more baseless objections. It'll, It'll be, be this, this much! Nah, I cannot make any careless remarks. That's not even that bad. That's not like half. That's like a quarter of it. Yeah, Is you it... could make like three mistakes. I said there's some way I can charge him with his crimes. Well, if there's one thing we learned in this episode, never ever trust the clown. No, don't go, don't trust circuses for crying out loud. <laughs> like, they're creepy. Mo was trustworthy, and that's literally it. Mo was trustworthy, but that's because Mo is like, like a soccer dad, just in a clown <laughs> costume. Also, man, Money the Monkey just keeps hanging around the murderers, doesn't he? <laughs> he does. He does! You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, that's it for today. Thanks so much for and watching. Birds. All the birds are hanging All out, too. All the birds. Tune in next time. We'll be uh, cross-examining Simon Keysmore. You kind of see why I like him so much now. Yeah. He's very entertaining. He I've, is. I've been looking forward to voicing him for a while. Anyhow, until we meet again, my friends, have a great day and God bless.